All right, what the fuck are we talking about this week? Um, in the heart of the sea. Of the sea. See, we're getting so good at this show. We're completing each other's sentences. I see. S- you see? <laughs> <laughs> you ABC? <laughs> wait, wait, let me let me explain something to you. Um, I'm the dude. What is it? It's the one that said bad motherfucker. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Ah! We're sending you back to the future. All right. In the Heart of the Sea came out this year. Came out yesterday. Uh, today. Or came out today. Yeah. I mean, you could have seen you, it. You could have seen it with the official. What is it like? Like with cars, it's every year. It. You know, you buy a car this year, it's a 2016. Mm-hmm. Buy a car next year, it's 2017. What the fuck? And then now movies, they, they just, come out on Friday, but you can see it on Thursday. They just want you to feel rele- relevant for more than 365 days. <laughs> That's why. I guess so. That's funny. All right. Current events. What are we going to talk about? What do you... You have something that I don't know. Well, which... first of all, the new X-Men trailer came out yes. last night. Pretty excited about that. Sansa Stark is Jean Grey. Mm-hmm. Oscar Isaac, great actor, finally being recognized. I don't know how he takes it. Sometimes people can't make the good actor transference to movie star. There is a difference. Mm-hmm. Now, it looks like Adam Driver is kind of doing the same thing now that he's the new villain. But Oscar Isaac, show, he was... In Drive, he's in all these freaking movies, like great art films, uh, the what was the fr- most violent year, like all this stuff. And now he's Apocalypse, an X Men Apocalypse, and in Star Wars. Wait, okay, dumb question. Mm-hmm. Who is he in in X Men? He's Apocalypse, the new bad Wait, guy. What? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See, it doesn't sound like him at all. I, I wonder if that's his. Acting, or if that's post production, I don't know. Obviously, anything... the new Batman wasn't like you know Ben Affleck made him sound like a robot. <laughs> okay, we're but... one episode away from Star Wars. Yeah, is there anything? If there's anyone I'm more excited about, or most excited about to talk about and to see what it is their story is in Star Wars, it's Oscar Isaac. Yeah, I still story. don't know because I thought he was gonna be the Luke character, seeing as how he was the pilot, but it makes mm-hmm. it look like. They revealed his name is Finn, you know, the black stormtrooper guy that everybody's like, get him with the pitchfork, stormtroopers are black, you know, I'm like, <laughs> really? Okay, because Luke and Han weren't stormtro- stormtroopers in the first movie or anything. Yeah. You know, like, come on, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, so he's the new um, apocalypse, the new baddie, he's and my current event place. is that the suit... This is kind of widely known, um, but it looks like Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers movie. He comes out of the purple egg, and he's like a purple bad guy, and he looks kind of futuristic. Mm-hmm. And I heard that he was purple, and because of all the backlash, I'm like, you guy, he looks like Ivan Ooze. They want people to take him seriously. Mm-hmm. So they, re- they re-rendered his color to blue. In post-production? Mm-hmm. What? Just recently. <laughs> That's nuts. So, and in the trailer it shows, and I don't care, purple, blue, you're already not, you know, a normal a, color, so who cares? Look back at that. That's, uh... But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's too much. That's um, crazy. A lot of stars in this new one. Um, so, I have, uh, I, have a, I have a couple of things. It's one that... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> There's one thing that... Uh, my co-host and my boss Nick told me <laughs> I need to say is um, we're it seems and I I totally agree it's not really a current event though in my opinion but it seems like every every Disney movie it's like Disney realized that they can take all of their movies uh, all of their animated movies and their, their Movies it, of the past. It and... is a current event because it's going to be current that way for at least the next three years as far as the lineup goes. All right. I think it goes Tarzan, Jungle Book, directed by John Favreau, of all people. And I think they're just going to CGI the animals and have voices behind it and be like live action besides that. 
Mm-hmm. Just like, obviously, those monkeys in the Tarzan trailer weren't. Do you <laughs> think, like, Samuel Jackson will do some, like, crazy line? Like, looks like he's just so out of place in that movie. Like, he's they in must... Tarzan? Yeah, shows him, like, kind of talking to Tarzan at the end of the trailer, and it shows him, like, dodging, like, a spear or something, and I don't know who his character would be. Obviously, Christoph Waltz is, like, the main asshole of the... Mm-hmm. He's pretty good at that. Um, and uh, the guy from True Blood is Tarzan. Yeah. Um, so, who knew? Margot Robbie, if you get naked in a movie, like, Wolf of Wall Street, doors will open for you. So, mm-hmm. I just want to say... Listen to that, girls. <laughs> 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 what a lesson being taught. <laughs> is it, I just want to say, random note, I just totally saved the continuity of this of your rant just now okay by muting everything i have because i had in the course of your last monologue or dialogue there or monologue you, i had like four text messages and two emails Jeez. all of my technology was like rah, 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 in my pocket thank god because so, people need to hear me say things so yeah there's that the, the man has spoken. But anyways... <laughs> what do you think about I, that Tarzan trailer, I, though? Since, I love since it. that is current. That just came out. Okay, that... in You know, I just posted, and I hope I was going to get backlash. That's why I made... I tried to make a post on our, on our page that was actually controversial. Hmm. I was like, come on, Hollywood. You can do better. Like... What are you, a bunch of monkeys? <laughs> yeah, they just... Like, IMDb is looks so sad to me right now. It's just a know. bunch of... It's a bunch of stuff that's reprisals, and I hate it. I don't know if it's going to be good. That trailer didn't convince me. Tarzan? Mm. I think it looks great because I'm, I'm in love with the whole cast. It, I do I do like the cast. Then I, like like I'm saying though, like Samuel L. Jackson looks like they just it looks like they put him in there to be eccentric to get people interested in Tarzan. Mm-hmm. Jaiman Hansu is like a random like jungle leader. You seen that? He's like mm-hmm. standing on like a waterfall or some shit. Is he the dude from Blood Diamond? Yeah, that's Diamond his name. Hansu. Okay, I, d- I never and the remember island. his name. Remember, he has like crazy masks for no reason. Yep, hunting down clones, clone hunter, Jaiman Hansu, <laughs> baddest actor, not baddest as in terrible. He's in freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So he's great. He is. Uh, but in here, back to what I was sorry getting at yeah. <laughs> is, I believe that. The reason why I didn't say didn't want to say that was a current event about the about mm-hmm. just just kind of a, basically you're talking about a current trend, not really an event. This is an event would be described as something that's like like an actual news article where you can interview people and you could have statistics and facts. Yes, there's kind of facts there, but like you said, it's current. It's going to be a constant trend, not really an event that happens. It's, it's going to be the current. Besides Marvel, mm-hmm. it looks like that's all, and cartoons, like the couple they put out a year, that's all they got for, as yeah. far as live action goes. They ain't going to make another Tron. They lost money on that twice. Yeah. So, <laughs> bye-bye. And I heard they were going to try and remake Black Hole, an, old, an oldie but a goodie that didn't make any money back in the day either. So what I wanted to, what I wanted to say is the current event, which is a good segue into talking about in the heart of the sea is I just looked up. It's uh, this is a, I guess in the heart of the sea opened, uh, with kind of disappointing numbers. Mm-hmm. It only um, I don't know if I'm trying to make sure I'm quoting this right. Just Thursday night only made five hundred seventy five thousand mm. dollars. And if you're opening nationwide, that's nothing. So it's kind of disappointing. Did it open nationwide last night, though? It opened to three thousand one hundred and three domestic locations, which is pretty standard. Hmm. That's that's actually the standard number. That's like every ma- that's like three or four, okay, uh, three or four theaters in major cities, and and then all the outlying stuff. So, so. do you want to get into Heart of the Sea now? Yeah, that was my quick okay. actual true uh, current event. <laughs> okay, because I can. One. Uh, tail on that all right i was just fucking bored with this movie (laughs) i didn't really like it (laughs) no i thought i was gonna like it i thought it was gonna be a ron howard epic but Mm -hmm. i feel like you're gonna watch that movie again and be like "Mm." it was just everybody want expects a good ron howard film and it was filmed well but what a shitty plot man like 
come on. I'm not going to watch a movie where an hour of it is people just stranded on a boat. I've seen that movie. It was called Castaway. I don't need to see it again. Come on. Chris Hemsworth is barely even in that movie, it seemed. Although, I think Brendan Gleeson, that was probably the best acting in that movie. I will give my hat, to, or tip my hat to him. Hmm. I I didn't enjoy it. I'm not going to watch it again. I'll tell you what. What, did, what the f- It was no Creed. <laughs> Who? Okay, so... Brendan Gleeson is last... Mad-Eye Moody. I don't know. I, I, I kind of disagree with you. I, I liked it because it, I mean... To a certain extent, you have to. You have to. If you're gonna say it's a true story mm-hmm. and you're you're being true to material that happened, you can't like skip out on things. Yes, there's a way you can write it to make it more interesting, but well, see, but that's the thing. He did that with Rush. It was kind of just like was too... Rush good though? Rush. Well, they took uh, just the bare facts of these two people's lives, and then they made a film where. Not only are they competing on the road, but their lives are competing. One's getting married, the other one's getting married. One gets in a car crash, one can't stop the chase. You know, mm-hmm. it. They made their lives. They kept going back and forth, where really on paper it's just like two regular kind of dudes have normal lives, getting married and whatever, divorces, and mm-hmm. uh, the the race was the only interesting part. But because of the way that they wrote it, it made it that much interesting they were always even though they don't physically go at it all the time the back and forth made it seem like one character was getting ahead one character was getting behind Mm -hmm. just like a race and i all i wanted to see was a white whale get harpooned in the face I wanted to see Captain Ahab doesn't exist in this story apparently. Oh um, yeah, because it was not, that was the that was Moby Dick. This I didn't is... realize that. See, and you, you marketed it to me as the real story behind Moby Dick. If you're gonna do that to me, make it more interesting than Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I didn't feel like it was. I would mm-hmm. rather see Moby Dick remade. Honestly, I thought I, I loved the fact that it. You know what this reminded me of? And I know you're about to totally disagree with me, but... Master the, and Commander? No, this totally... <laughs> what? But they were on the island on that one, too. Okay. <laughs> I just... I feel like... I was so totally, off with that. This totally brought me to that feeling that you got from Jaws. It's like... Like, they, the, the feeling of, of, like, there's a monster, but you don't really see it. And they that wasn't, like... The, the whale wasn't the biggest part of the story. It was really about the people. Okay, so then I gave up on that. You're right. I gave up on the whale thing. And I was like, oh, okay, so is this going to be a movie about the morals of man? Don't freaking mess with nature. Stop stabbing whales in the face. <laughs> and this is this these characters' penance for messing with nature. But it wasn't really that movie either. I was, dis- I was so in it till halfway through, and I just fell off i was like okay i'm done with well this i have to i feel like we're we're totally like what's his name um roger and ebert or whatever mm-hmm. like yeah. i have to totally disagree with you we can't agree on every movie because man. because well I, I wish that we would agree on this one <laughs> i fucking like it dude <laughs> just, no I just, um i, I can not i when they got stranded that it was like something like 80 days or something 90 days 90 days yeah but there was a there was a stint of like 10 days on an island yeah but that whole thing what made that okay so there was a long time it got to i'm i'm breaking i'm getting choppy now but um like in comedy th- you know like the whole like three times a charm like like, you can tell a joke and you can drag it on for three different punch lines, and then you got to move on to the next joke. It's the same thing with drama and same thing with anything, any kind of story element is, like, they get stranded at sea after their boat sinks. And then there's, like, there's like three major story elements that happen, and then they land that, that, are, that are having to do with, like, like, rationing their food, you know, a dilemma between, you know, shipmates and, and, and like... Seeing land, I don't remember the, the other the other third part, but they got to land. Then that broke that part that broke that apart. And then after that, then they got back out at sea. And then what made it really interesting is the cannibalism. That yeah, was cool. I saw it as this way: they're gonna build me up to see this whale destroy the 
boat, and then there's going to be a redemption. Something in there. You, you, the the line graph goes up. The whale hits the boat. The line graph goes down. Mm. Then it's supposed to go up at the end, and it didn't do that for me. You know um, what was missing? I know it was missing. Why did they have to meet up with uh, freaking uh, Christopher Columbus's boat? Did you catch that? The, the Santa Maria? Yeah, I was like, oh, is Christopher Columbus going to show up? And nope. <laughs> I, I think that it could have... It's because that ship was not decommissioned. That ship probably was recommissioned as a whaling ship later on in its in its voyages. Like, and it was out there still. I thought that was kind of like some fan evidence. service. And then I was like, oh, I was just pretty distasteful. What, what are they fan servicing? They're servicing well, because he was like such, history Because that guy's a well-known Spanish actor. He's like the bad guy in Bad Boys 2. Oh, and he I was, was like, great. He I was great. Part. He said three things. It's all the part he, he had. I thought he was the guy in Jaws. He's like, sometimes the shark go away. Sometimes the shark don't go he away. He didn't have an arm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I was like, I was like, is he gonna explain the arm? And he like looks at his arm. I was like, ah. But then he just leaves. I was like, oh. Well, he okay. he said that they left the you know that boat the whale left him a scar that he would remember. Fucking whale ate his arm. There's nothing. I thought <laughs> that he would come on the boat, help him out, something. The the character could have just not been in that movie for all I cared. Yeah. Here's what it needed. Here's what it needed that would have made you satisfied. Is at the very beginning. So there's got to be some kind of like like Gibbs character that's like, you know, I bet you remember that the story of Moby Dick, but that's not how it really went down. And all then I they went into was it, right? Something at the end. That's all I wanted. You're gonna make me sit there for their ninety days, and all you're gonna do is just make them very okay at the end. There's no whale dying. There's no them learning a lesson. There's just them kind of waking up. Uh, let's eat the black guy. Sorry, if, I didn't mean to be racist, but he did die first. Just saying. And then no, a bunch of people died on the boat. Not people that died boat. On the island. Not that boat. They didn't. Okay, so he died <laughs> first in the storyline that happened towards the third act of the movie. <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. I think if the little kid died, they wouldn't ate him. I'm just saying. I don't know. How did that guy live and the the bigger, stronger guy died? <laughs> <laughs> that kid didn't get any skinnier, and the other actors totally lost, like, half their body weight. I The new Spider-Man. I honestly don't know. What's that guy's name? Tom Holland. Tom Holland. You heard mm-hmm. it, folks. You heard it here first. The new Spider-Man am, has a uh, tiny role I was, in the uh, to see. pretty excited to see that, uh, his, I think his name's Ben Walker, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, he got work. Okay, good. That movie wasn't for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, that movie made well, money. He was the captain. He's Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. That's I knew I recognized he him. He was a great even though he definitely wasn't Abraham Lincoln, I thought he played a good Lincoln. I don't that know. He sounded like Lincoln, he walked like Lincoln. Hey, he on, slayed on the, vampires just like Lincoln. On the note of Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> um kind of vampire slayer. But the the, the Lincoln movie, mm-hmm. the poster, um I knew it looked familiar. And then Ellis showed me a photo today, and I was like, "That's what it is." It, there was a photo of it sitting next to, like, in a like a DVD rack, you mm-hmm. know, sitting next to, like, one of the Alien movies. It was like Alien Three, and the poster is like oh, exactly just, the same. The profile, look? yeah, it's yes, a sideways yes. head the looking Alien down. 3. It says That's Alien right. Three, yeah. and then it says Lincoln. The titles were even like in the same like zone. I'm like, seriously. That poster designer, probably the same guy. He was just lazy. Mm, probably the same guy, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't, there's, uh, I felt like it was missing a big chunk. Here's, there's, there's okay. nothing redeeming or, there's nothing really satisfying. Let me just say that at the end. Mm-hmm. I, I, it, I think it had, here's the deal though. Did you think Apollo 13 was redeeming and satisfying? Yes. It was they the same story. Made it. No, they no, 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 no. They went it's out into It's not the same peril. story. They went out into it the unknown. It doesn't go like 8,000 days in space. And then they're like, you got any water? Nope. 8,001 days in space. That's what they no, did they, in this movie. <laughs> no, they went out into peril. Something went wrong. And it was the journey home. It was the I hero's was, journey was, to make I'm it not, home. I didn't say Very the whole The story. end is just such... Oh, you can't. Tom Hanks got to see his kid at the end. 
See? And that's the thing is like, and he kind of just like, hi, honey. And she's like, oh my God, it's been eight years or whatever. <laughs> His daughter's like a grown woman. Here's the funny thing is that m- the movie made it out to be worse than than the real deal. Because... That's what I'm saying. I would have... No, 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 actually, uh, um, I was wrong. I was the opposite. Uh, the movie made it better. No. They made, they made average... Average... Um, Voyages sound like they're only two years, two or three years. This says that the average whaling voyage was four to five years at sea. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, you pussies got back before most other ships were done. Like, you got back sooner. You were stranded at sea, granted, but pff, I don't know. Uh, there needed to be something there, man, at the end. Mm-hmm. You can't just eat a guy and then show me day 93. All right, see you, other boat. Day 94. They're back. Hey, other boat. What are you doing? And then day 95, the boat's gone again. Oh, what the fuck? you got to be I kidding it's me. Weird. I, it's just weird that may, it's like you and I saw the same fucking movie, same theater, <laughs> two rows apart for, for, for date reasons. <sighs> but and, and there was just a, an, an emotional disconnect with you. Maybe you it, were just so connected I, I with the person sitting next maybe. to you. Maybe <laughs> I was into it. the the freaking. I was into the whole beginning. I was not disinterested. I was like, "This is a great beginning." Beginning on the boat. Uh, freaking Hemsworth's accent is shaky, but okay, I'll even forgive that. Well, he has an English accent. He has an American accent. What the fuck? Anyway, well, you actually know what was going on there? I don't know what was going on there. That's what it's I'm saying. Nantucket in 1850. Is uh, you have it's still a huge crossbreed of accents, so it was accurate. The, you have you have el- I feel you, there's... like you're giving him an excuse, but he no, said some of the same Other words have different. The same thing. But why would he say some words? He said like friends twice, and it was the different way of saying friends. How mm. does that is? I understand there's a crossbreed, but you don't just change accents when when you have a word. That's mm. how you say that word. I don't say water, and then I don't say water mm. later. It's, just, it's always well, one thing. I don't know. It, he, maybe he wasn't perfect at it, but, <laughs> but still you heard going, it here. By, <laughs> going by like like historical accuracy, Nantucket had a huge crossbreed of, of accents, and then also you got a guy, what is he, Australian? Do you think that joke, there once was a girl from Nantucket, came from like loose wives and their husbands at sea? I don't know that whole joke. I've only heard the first it's part. It's usually about like a slutty girl at the end of that joke. There once was a girl from Nantucket. Da 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 da. Maybe. Mine's with Tucket. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Nantucket. I don't know. <laughs> All I gotta say is, is I just think it's weird that there's such an emotional disconnect with you. But I thought it was. Like riveting. I don't like the, the seeing things. Back. Like I don't want to watch people at sea when nothing's gonna happen. Um, Broken kind of did it too. Uh, just skip that scene. Don't don't put me there. The only time it worked was like Tom Hanks because we all thought he was gonna die. Like nobody thought he was gonna make it, and then a cruise ship is right next to him. Mm. He he's saved. And then Life of Pi. There's like magic. There's lions and whales and shit. It's like an actual like. Uh, way of filmmaking and this they're just like day one at sea haven't eaten anybody yet day eight he's dead cook him up day eight uh, i didn't want to watch a journal chronicle of them at sea when the rest of the movie was so vastly different like Mm. i i don't know the rest of the movie i was totally fine with i liked a lot Ron Howard, they were putting like cameras on things that I normally like that when, there was a camera on a pen going into ink. There was one for the sail. It made you like feel everything in the room. Made you feel. I thought that was cool because usually. But then they gave up on that though when they went. There's three boats in the sea. The only interesting part was that one guy kind of killed himself, and the captain didn't really feel all that bad about it in the end. <laughs> it was like his cousin. <laughs> it was his cousin. Like, He's like, no, nah, all, all right, right. eat him. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the one thing I gotta say, the one bad part I gotta say about it, I mean, by no means is it a classic. It's not like a Ron I, Howard I'm telling classic. you, man, nobody's gonna watch this movie twice. Nobody's gonna but, be like, let's watch that on Blu-ray. Yeah. But the problem I see with it was the, just this heavy color grading. It was yeah. so yellow It was and green. green. Yeah. Was like, what the fuck, 
at my... I can't even focus on It kind of made things. me sick. It kind of gave me a little bit of a headache at times. Like, I can understand when they were actually whaling, it was cool. Because mm-hmm. you just got this solo little boat. So it you got matched dude. with the CGI, it, and it actually yeah. wasn't that bad CGI. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I, I was like, that's kind of a perfect story for, you know, because before that, like, what did they have? What I heard, the interesting thing I heard behind the scenes kind of thing is... There was definitely some real fish in that, for yeah. sure. But there was a lot of, um, there, there, they shot like in the winter months, as mm-hmm. far as I know. And a, a lot of this stuff, like 90% of what you see was nowhere near the water. They were in studios and yeah, they had a lot of that? green there's screen. There's like always one, st- I think there's like one studio and it's like hard for movies to film around it because like Pirates of the Caribbean will be there and you're like, oh, can't film Pirates, so mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You're going to have to wait. <laughs> but the... I heard that they shot it during the winter months, and, like, Ron Howard sitting in his nice freaking, you know, uh, baseball cap, you know, kind of <laughs> happy-go-lucky looking at his screen, and back behind, you know, closed doors, and they're out there in this, like, I guess it's like 40-degree water, and it's splashing them around and shooting all that ice-cold water on these name bur- these nice. like, <laughs> household names. It just said, though, that they shot a lot of it in the Canary Islands, too. Where they did, the original yeah, well, they Moby had to Dick do island filmed. stuff, and they had to do outdoor scenes. You saw I they think were... there's always, like, a scene, I don't know if you noticed this, but there's always, like, some uh, circle-shaped cave facing the ocean. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you that's always the same spot in movies. Mm-hmm. It was at the end of Noah, too, where he's just drinking on the beach. I was like, that's got to be the same spot. Mm-hmm. It's probably... There is a cave in, in L.A. Yeah. That's very <laughs> it's, it's commonly the, it's known. It's so, like, the mm-hmm. same. <laughs> but the... No, the they there was probably, I'd say, maybe 150 outdoor shots in that movie. But you can kind of tell, if you watch, you can see where, like, there's no way that, that, there's no amount of lighting that you could massively light a situation that looks like sunlight. It just, it's close. It's not the same. It's always a little different. It's, uh, it, I like the idea. It's Herman Melville getting the story from Mo- Moby Dick. It's like a back and forth, like, uh, Chaplin kind of thing where... They're figuring out the story as it goes, and the other guy listening to him surprise the whole damn time, and it, it just lost me at, you know, the last forty five minutes. I'm just like, okay, well, I thought this was gonna be good, mm-hmm. and then I think clearly that's losing people too, other people too, well, and it's already a movie that only really belongs to the older crowd, really. I have to agree with you on this. There's one major fallacy that kind of happened. Okay, so they, they're the this big whale Moby Dick, more like Moby Double. He wasn't even all that white. He was just kind of like spotted. <laughs> he was spotted. He was scarred. He looked like he took down fifty other ships, but he. Are but whales this, known for that? I wonder. Like just jacking up ships for crimes committed against them. No, and I think this is the only <laughs> tale. That, <laughs> that is the Punisher of whales. <laughs> He followed he was like, him the whole movie. He was, he was a shark. That's what I was going to say. He wasn't a whale. That's what I was, gonna, I was getting at, is that he takes down their ship, insane, and then they get stranded at sea, and then they find an island, and like as soon as they see the island, they start to row towards land it, and then this... blows! And land, and then they're getting fucked. They get fucked by the fucking whale again, and knocks off... Like I think he killed mm-hmm. a couple of people like, yeah. with that, that Some whole thing. cannon fodder, nameless... Extras. Yeah. <laughs> think people that we, we can't afford to have these. Let's have them attack. We got Thor again. and Spider Man in this movie. Screw them. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> but that happened. And then later in the movie, oh, it wait, happened. And again. the bad guy from Batman. Sorry, there's quite a few uh, comic book yeah. people in this movie. The, the Irish guy? Yeah. Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy, mm-hmm. yeah. But that happened twice after they were stranded. Mm-hmm. There was. Instances where the whale was still following them, even after they left the island. But it just kind of went away. See, and I then he like... gets to the part where he's going to kill the whale, and he does not And I was like, okay, this would be a good time for like a soft like narration of like, and that's the story of how men shouldn't affect nature or something way better acted than that. Mm. And cut it there, not be like... 
Well, then he also uh, bought a boat and he went looking for the other ship. And uh, I don't need to put that in like a one paragraph thing you do at the end of a movie. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) okay, I want to voice. I have I have like this aggressive, like, like boiling anger that I that that I have from multiple movies, and I just can't. And maybe you can tell me how this works, but I can't like understand the emotions of people and this is obviously true i just cannot put my head in in the minds of people of those like early time periods the captain he his whole his whole beef with thor (laughs) was the fact that he was not of like noble blood he was like he was giving him shit from the beginning because he didn't. He was like, "Well, you're not really a Nantucket. You're not a man of Nantucket. Your your dad was a bastard." And it's like that whole uh, the hierarchy uh, mentality. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but why like in the, the Help f- and I just like all can't the other movies. Understand that, and it just makes me angry at the core. Maybe because I totally people, side and agree with the opposite. It it makes me angry too, and that that frankly happens in the army today. I could be the first to tell you, mm-hmm. people that don't really deserve respect like for legacies. being a leader get the position of a leader, and they're mad that other people don't respect them. But at the same time, you just drove me into a fucking storm, Captain. All my that clothes are wet. The ship blown apart. Like you... And that's what happens in the real military, too. Is like you, you put when you put people in leadership positions that have no actual leadership qualities, this movie mm. was a great example of that. You should rely on people with experience instead of getting in their way or become a better leader. Pick one. Yeah. Don't you screw with people and that's what happens. That just pisses me off to the core. And I don't know why. Like, I, I guess I know why, but I just, I cannot, like, I feel... Like, most of my life and everything I've ever, every story I've ever heard and, and everyone I've ever encountered, I feel like I can somehow agree or side with them on their point of view and things. Like, I, I get where you're coming from. But this type of character, I don't understand them. And it pisses me off. It's weird. It's a and weird my thing. My family owns them, took it, so I'm the captain. And we're yeah, gonna there's go a whole that part storm. where he's like, <laughs> he, he just like screamed really loud. He's like, Do you know my name? I'm and Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> 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 Pretty much. <laughs> That's funny. But man, I don't know. That was such a stupid. That was a pretty good example of like, I mean, it. It happens in the military, it happens in the police, it happens in firemen, it happens with filmmakers, it happens in every job that there is. And but there's only certain jobs where that costs lives. Yeah. And it was a that captain just screwed everybody on that goddamn ship. He <laughs> should have never been on it, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Well Is it time? Is it time? I think it's time. Well, it's time for the Quiz of the Sea. Is that the title? The Quiz of the Sea? I'm calling it that. <laughs> All right. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so am I being quizzed? <laughs> You're being quizzed. Well, obviously. I will describe a movie, and you have to guess which one of the films with the title of C, the word C in the title it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, by the way, okay, so um, the wager last time was I had to see... Did you fulfill it? I did not fulfill it yet. You kind of said you wouldn't either I... on that. <laughs> so now you got to watch one and two. <laughs> if I lose this one, but I don't know if I'm... You can't say I'm going to lose it that quick. What? Well, I mean, it kind of tough, because I, I had a feeling that you weren't going to watch Sharknado like you were supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the stakes are Sharknado 2, right? I feel like there's got to be something that I can, like, what, what if you lose? Like, how can I, how can I be sure you're going to be, will you give your word, unlike the guy in Heart of the Sea, and actually <laughs> go for it? Elias word is no better on paper than it is in his mouth. Yeah, exactly. Good Bye. job, Chris. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> What's your favorite uh, Ron Howard movie? Just quick. Uh, Paul 13. Mine's uh, Ransom. 
Ransom? Yeah. Oh. That's a good one. Every time like I give my kid to somebody and they're like, do you want to hold him now? I'm like, give me back my son! <laughs> and nobody gets it. I'm like, remember Mel Gibson? All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got to get three out of five right. I give you a little bit of plot and a couple actors, and you got to guess which one of the movies it is. All right? Okay. Multiple choice. First question? First question. A film about singer Bobby Darren starring Kevin Spacey. Beyond the Sea, Devil in the Deep Blue Sea, Black Sea, or Song of the Sea? You're in luck. Because you know I know one? this one. Okay. Somewhere beyond the sea. There you somewhere go. Somewhere <laughs> Jordan doesn't sing that well. No. <laughs> <laughs> My right. lover doesn't listen to me sing. All Good right. job. <laughs> That was the easy one. All right, right. question (laughs) number two. A druggy crime drama starring Val Kilmer. Deep Blue Sea. The Salton Sea. Percy Percy Jackson Sea of Monsters. Or By the Sea. What are the first two choices again? Deep Blue Sea. The Salton Sea. Oh, yeah, the first two. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's not the second two. Because By the Sea just came out. and So I basically just gave myself a 50-50 there. Yep. Okay. Val Kilmer, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say The Salton Sea. Good job. All right. Yeah! Because Deep Blue Sea was the shark thing. Right? Oh, shit. Well... Technically, you just got three, because that was my last question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you didn't have to. You could have, for the sake of the show, still asked me that I could have, but it was like word for word. You like... got bonus, right? You I'll make up one. Okay. okay. Here All we go. All right. Question number three. Technically four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At least you don't have to watch Sharknado. There's yeah. that. Here we go. Two friends pose as dance instructors on a cruise ship, starring Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. What? Is it 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Under the Sea, The Old Man in the Sea, or Out to Sea? I'm going to have to go with Out to Sea. Good job. (laughs) So, okay, how about this? If you get this one right, five out of five, you don't have to... Do I redeem? You redeem the last one. Yes. Because you could have watched two. One's already good. Here we go. Last question. (laughs) Ready? Cop father, addict son. Robert De Niro and James Franco. City by the Sea, The Sea Chase, Sea of Love, or Sea to Sea? Uh, Robert De Niro and James Franco are in a mm-hmm. movie together? One of James Franco's like first big ones. What, is it, what are the choices again? Uh, City by the Sea, The Sea Chase, Sea of Love, or Sea to Sea? I'm going to have to go with City by the Sea. Yeah, you got it. Yeah! Good job. That's <laughs> <up. laughs> Oh, you know what I never did? What? Correct answer. Oh. Good job. Yeah! <laughs> and now the end of the show. Good job. That was intense. You know, There's okay, here's... damn the, sea movies. The thing, the, the, the thing about sea movies is... Uh, that whole the whole segment it's it was great but the the problem is is that there's a lot of like just i common sense that goes into those answers it's like which i thought one i would have gotcha with uh the kevin spacey one because the last one was song of the sea and i was like oh singer maybe a little fucking... yeah <laughs> but i'm a really big bobby darren fan and kevin you spacey are fan, a so bobby darren fan i love there's like none living i love his music <laughs> and i love that movie and i love kevin spacey so 
Dude, I knew that one. <laughs> I like Kate Bosworth. What happened to her? She hasn't been in things in a while. She's a great yeah. actress. Uh, yeah. But the, the other thing is that it just, it just happenstance that the movies that you were talking about, a lot of the extra answers are movies that I've seen. And I'm like, I kind of really? could be wrong. Have but you seen I... Black Sea? No. Have you seen By the Sea? Yeah. Have you seen Under the Sea? Maybe. Sea of Love. Sounds familiar, but obviously, sea, <laughs> sea of Love. Okay, Sea of Love was not going to be the answer about it, like a drug addict and his father. So, Why not? <laughs> it's a it's a father son thing. I think that no, I don't think any Hollywood company in their right mind would name it Sea of Love. That sounds like a rom com. Could have that been. has to do with like Adam Sandler is stuck on a boat with Barry Drew Barrymore. What was that one called? Live. Oh, that was called Overboard, the one that he was in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> should have had that one as a bonus. Um, I'm telling you, you should just give me these quizzes because <laughs> we should try. Yeah, we, next you week just we try should to flip it. Me at no, all. wait, next week is everybody. Star Wars. Next week oh, we yeah. need to have a, we need to we need to see who has the most Star Wars trivia. Is Ella going to be on the show next week? I think so. Yeah. I think, well, yeah, she's coming with us. We're going. Say. We're going to I don't see. Know if she's gonna fall asleep again. Like she's she actually got to give Ella a shout out for this episode. She came through with the tickets. For Star Wars, because we were not really thinking about the doing... The Force was strong with this one. The Force she was strong. She shot first. That's what I'm really hoping to see. I really hope that J.J. Abrams puts, like, some crazy badass uh, that's, like, daunting, and Han just shoots him in the face. Yeah. That would be, like, the everybody for that scene alone would be like, Oh, J.J. did it! <laughs> he slapped George <laughs> Lucas in the face! Eat a dick! Did you... Did you hear... Okay, I don't want to get too into depth with this because this is something that could be interesting for next episode, but I don't want to save it only for next episode because next one we we could have so much shit to talk about with the new movie that... Okay. But did you hear about the whole, like, theory behind Jar Jar Binks? Yeah, Ella... Ella, I I, uh, Facebooked Ella uh, to see which theater it was, and then I was like, are are you a Star Wars fan? Because I didn't know. I don't Mm -hmm. know her that well. And, uh... She's like, yeah, what, I, you got to listen to this thing. It's the most awesome thing. And I watched the whole 15-minute video. Crazy, and by the end right? of it, I was convinced. At first, I was like, yeah. nah, bullshit, bullshit. What? That could have happened. Jar Jar is evil. Yeah. <laughs> George Lucas just was too much of a wuss to put it in the film. It makes sense. If, if that one deleted scene that he says was supposed to be in it, because mm-hmm. one he shows, and one he's like, there's one where Jar Jar and the Emperor walk together. And I was like, that would have been something, but they, I don't know, maybe that was just the guy talking out of his ass. Yeah. Because that brought it together for me. I was like, That's oh, crazy. that would have been, because well, you know nobody was like, suspected it. I mean, know? the whole thing was that selling it to me. That would have been the greatest, me. like, that would have been better than uh, who the fuck was the Zodiac Killer or something, yeah. you know? <laughs> the, the, you know what sold it for me, though? I mean, it all was, was, was convincing me, but... When they showed those like slow motion like reaction shots of him yeah. kind of guiding conversations with the force, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I didn't buy any of that. But <laughs> I, I thought like if he could have turned dark or the emperor could have turned him dark, mm-hmm. and like he would have been the last guy. He would have been like the perfect freaking uh, what do you call that? Uh, I love the theory. Cell sword. <laughs> I, I love the theory of the like he's like a Shaolin like drunken master. He's like based on the drunken master that thing. That was kind of like yeah, I was like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. To, like, he was kicking some well, ass. When, he, a when they got to the style. political part, that was what kind of convinced me. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the part <laughs> where he's like, he does a, a double a twist and a half flip that's only been seen by Luke in episode six. I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> I think it have been. Well, that, that whole theory about the movies, like, mirroring themselves is is really holds true and it and that was another factor of it did it seem like lucas took any risk with those it was all we all knew anakin was going to be darth vader but he didn't he could have used those other two movies to become great movies instead of two prequels all we wanted to see all anybody wanted to see was anakin turning into darth vader that's Mm -hmm. going into this buying into three movies that's what we were all waiting for. And he didn't make it really interesting along the way. 
Maybe he was setting up for Jar Jar Binks Maybe to be a, a bad big deal. Director. <laughs> Maybe, well, could be. But I feel like he was setting up for Jar Jar Binks to be a big deal. And then there was bad backlash, yes, from the public. They're like, what the fuck is this character? But also... But you're the guy the... that made the other Star Wars. Just, you take risks for... You wrote or wrote them anyway. Like, what do you care what people think? Hmm. It's a space movie where people use flashlights as swords. <laughs> what do you care? Like, come on. But I think that there could be an element in there that's like, he knew that that was almost too good of an idea... And and what would that have done? That would have spurred another trilogy. And he oh, was gee, not because interest- nobody would want to watch that. No, now <laughs> people would. But I feel like George Lucas is the kind of guy that's not willing to just give up his baby. The only reason he gave up the baby is for six point two billion dollars. That is literally selling out. <laughs> yes, but he wasn't willing to just have another director. So but he, he did gave up on the three. idea to not have another trilogy. And he now did, we're he didn't doing direct freaking Empire. He produced it. Well, <laughs> so what? Producing. He produced Indiana Jones. That's not his baby. Producing is just as big of a job as directing. He also produced Indiana Jones 5. He's lost his way. I guess It belongs so. in other people's hands. Did you Whatever. know he wrote a script for uh, Star Wars 7? And they're like, this is really good. Just like, you know, you would take a two-year-old's like math paper and be like, great. <laughs> Crumple, crumple, throw over your shoulder. Like, Seriously? They, they, he wrote a well, script Well, they obviously for... didn't use it. <laughs> Who wrote this one? Do you know? I thought it was J.J. Abrams, but I don't know. J.J. has always been a creative force and a conversation for writing, but I don't know him much for actually taking the writing credit. I don't think... Oh, I know George Lucas didn't have it. Maybe... Yeah. I, I wonder if he got Damon Lindelof, the guy that was uh, his go-to guy for Lost. He's a big writer now. Mm-hmm. He wrote Prometheus and uh, a bunch of other stuff. The freaking Facebook or the, the, say, the IMDb writers? page is nuts for, for oh Star Wars. Oh my god. It's hey, like they didn't remove whole... the black guy like China did. Did you hear that? That should have been a current event. That's crazy. Yeah, the I heard about Chinese that. Chinese racists removed. Even though there is technically another black guy in there, they, they didn't remove him. Okay, so Lawrence Kasdan, writer of Raiders of the Lost Ark, oh, Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, so they got an and Empire writer. Strikes Back. There you Damn go. Damn right. That's this. That actually, I wish I knew that earlier. Now I'm really fucking excited. See, but I wonder, did he write Phantom Menace? Because that could make me sway the other way. I don't think so. Let's see. Just Shadow go to like 2000. Yeah, I gotta go way back. No, he didn't. Good. Okay. So that's how it goes. That's the thing. That's why Mad Max works out so well. George Miller got him back. I think that's why everybody... Because so the people that have seen this movie haven't said anything bad about it yet. Wait, what? Untitled Han Solo Star Wars yeah, you didn't anthology hear about that? film? You didn't hear about that? No. You know who the front runner is? It's not being made yet. Nothing's on paper yet. Mm. Uh, Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. I would to love play this. Han? I would, he'd be great. He's got such like a grovelly, freaking badass voice. And they were gonna. Somebody said um, Jurassic World. What's his fucking name? Uh, no. Chris Pratt. Yeah. I was like, no, no. He Han Solo's not. A big he already muscle. has his own space drama. He I know. Need another one. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think Jesse Pinkman. Uh, what's his name? Aaron Paul mm-hmm. would be perfect. Cause Han Solo, he's not a big strong guy. He's quick with his hands and a great pilot. He's a space cowboy. Mm-hmm. he's badass with his actions not with like wonder... his figure and that's what they keep trying to do with these fucking mm-hmm. things and i don't like it i feel like i wonder what jesse pinkman we're calling him jesse pinkman that's not his name yeah, i know <laughs> aaron, aaron paul aaron paul yeah. yeah i wonder what he would look like with the hair the han solo hair you think because he's gonna yeah. that's there's no way they're gonna change he's gotta have the hair does he have to have the hair that's what well the like I would assume that if anything, Han Solo's hair got shorter well, did as he you got hear, older. Uh, you know the reason why I think it'd be cool because what it is is it would probably be him meeting up with Lando and getting in trouble with Jabba. That whole thing that would yeah. probably be the movie. That would be cool. And meeting Chewie probably, and Chewie would probably be not his friend mm-hmm. until the end of the movie or something like that. Because he doesn't uh, let him win. Here's the thing: is that they haven't showed this, but the only way it makes sense. 
is Lando is wearing Han's clothes in Return of the Jedi when he's using the Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. And they make fun of it in Family Guy. Like, why is he wearing Han's clothes? Mm -hmm. But then somebody else was saying, if you pay attention, Han got the Millennium Falcon from Lando. They're Lando's clothes. And Han is just a lazy bastard and doesn't go (laughs) to the shopping mall to buy clothes. That's that's. So hilarious. that would be great to put something like that in the movie. Like maybe he just like lifts the Millennium Falcon off of Lando, mm-hmm. and like the Millennium Falcon wouldn't be in the movie until like the end. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty. That would be like the great ending to that movie. I All think. right, we could talk for fucking ever we could. about Star Wars, and we're gonna next week. All right, probably gonna be the longest episode we ever record, but we gotta close this episode out. All right. So guys, fucking, we're gonna see Star Wars. Super excited. You better be excited too. Like, follow, share. I don't know. <laughs> and what are we going to say? Um, call like, me Ishmael. Call me Ishmael. What is that from? That's from Moby Dick, you idiot. What? <laughs> it's the last line. Of- <laughs> hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Flick of the Week. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and Facebook, as well as Pinterest. And pretty much any provider of podcasts, I guess. I mean, we're everywhere. So be sure to subscribe. Thank you.